What really happens to the price tag of a drug when its original patents expire? The medication's price drops significantly as generic options become available. Yes, science! How long that takes depends on the drug, the number of patents it has, and its placement on the formulary. And for a refresher on formularies, check out this video here. There are two major categories of drugs, small molecule and large molecule. You're probably more familiar with small molecule medications. These are drugs like allergy medicine, aspirin, and painkillers. Small molecule drugs are chemically derived, which means generic versions are exact chemical copies that can be produced and substituted for brand name versions. This means when you take a generic small molecule drug, you're getting the exact same medicine for less money. Biologics are large molecule drugs. Drugs like insulin and Botox are two familiar examples. Biologics are made from living organisms, which include blood and blood components, cells and tissues, proteins, bacteria, and more. And this means you cannot chemically replicate them like small molecule drugs. So it's more difficult to make generic versions of biologic drugs, which are more accurately called biosimilars. When you take a biosimilar, you're getting a less expensive drug that's highly similar to the brand name, but it's not an exact replica. As we learned in the last video, drug makers can obtain additional patents on their drug to extend its market exclusivity. But the distinction between small molecule and large molecule drugs is an important one. Because biologics have complex formulations, there's more opportunity for patent layering, which means biologics often have more patents than small molecule drugs. Let's look at one of the world's top selling drugs to get an example of what this can look like. In 2022, over 300,000 people in the United States were estimated to be taking the drug adalimumab, better known by the brand name Humira, to treat conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease. Humira's manufacturer AbbVie first obtained FDA approval for the drug in 2002 and its initial patents were set to expire in 2016. And those patents did expire in 2016. But prices did not go down for patients in 2016. Over time, AbbVie had accumulated more than 130 additional patents on its star drug, creating what is called a patent thicket. This thicket looked like dozens of patents obtained for tweaks on the drug, which extended Humira's market exclusivity and effectively shielded the drug from biosimilar competition for nearly another seven years. Some numbers. In 2003, the average list price for a Humira 40 mg syringe, adjusted for inflation, was $752.41 per prescription. In 2021, the same syringe rang in at a list price of $2,984.09. Wait, 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 back up. How did Humira possibly have at least 130 distinct patentable opportunities, all of which are new, non-obvious, and useful? The answer is they didn't really. However, they were able to get these patents thanks to something called terminal disclaimers. Let's take one of Humira's original patents on its formula. Say AbbVie scientists and researchers did more work in the lab, gathered more experimental results, and now have a bit of new information on this formula. This information might be obvious in light of its original patent and not patentably distinct, but it's still new information. So AbbVie can get a continuation patent on this new information, even though it might be obvious, as long as it has a terminal disclaimer a separate document that promises this continuation patent will expire at the same time as the original patent it's linked to. This continuation patent basically just broadens the language of the claims made in the original patent. How does this make patent thickets possible? What's the point of getting a continuation patent with a terminal disclaimer if it doesn't technically protect a drug for any additional time? Think about it this way. Every additional patent on a brand name drug, whether new and obvious or not, is another obstacle for a generic drug company hoping to develop a generic version of the drug. A generic drug company has to challenge each patent on the brand drug, which is expensive and time consuming. So even though patents with terminal disclaimers don't legally extend the exclusivity of the patent, in practice they do by making it hard and costly for competitors to challenge. A 2022 study found that 80% of Humira's US patents were linked by terminal disclaimers. If the rules on terminal disclaimers were changed, would biosimilar versions of Humira have entered the market sooner and more easily? No one can say. What we do know is that when Humira's patent portfolio finally expired in January 2023 and the patent thicket was cut down, the biosimilar version of the drug finally entered the market. But prices didn't go down for patients then either. When biosimilars for Humira were released in 2023, 
Humira only lost 2% of its market to the five available biosimilars at the time, even though some of these other versions cost 85% less than Humira. That means a lot of people were still paying for the higher priced brand name drug. Why? Time to bring it back to pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs. A big factor for a patient's access to a Humira biosimilar is where the drug's placement is on the formulary of the patient's health plan, or even if it's listed at all. In 2023, only 1,000 patients out of 42,000 people covered by Medicare and prescribed Humira received a biosimilar. One thought on why this may be is that maintaining Humira high on the formulary is advantageous for PBMs, as Humira's high list price means high rebates for PBMs. So. What does this all mean for the amount you pay? Even when patents expire, even with legislation facilitating faster generic and biosimilar drug entry, patient costs can take a while to go down. And even with these cheaper drugs in the market, there are now 10 biosimilars for Humira out there, access to them is largely dependent on what health plans decide to do. In April 2024, CVS Health removed Humira from its formularies and promoted a CVS-made biosimilar version that brought down costs for patients. The two other largest PBMs in the US, Express Scripts and OptumRx, recently announced that they'll also remove Humira from their formularies in 2025 and replace them with their own label-made Humira biosimilars. This is all good news for patients looking for cheaper options, but it does pose a question of what exactly incentivizes a health plan to act in pursuit of lower costs for consumers. 